about a year or two years ago, you've been, you've been make, making it migrating that when people come for practical on your farm, you always wear face mask. Now it's surprising that right now, everybody in the world right now has to wear face masks. What, what's your opinion about that? And I told them that if you know the principle of how disease works, microbes, pathogen works, you will know it's the same. Whether it's coronavirus, whether it's African <laughs> fever, whether it's cholera, whether it's smallpox. When, when I look at bacteria, when I look at pathogens, pathogens are meant virus, I meant fungi, I meant um, um, bacteria, I meant worms. When I look at them, I, I look at them as living objects and are trying to survive. There are four things they are trying to achieve. They are trying to grow. Unfortunately, it's in our body. They are trying to multiply and give back to children in our body. And when they multiply the body, they want to spread, they want that children to be spread to as many people as possible. So let me give you a good example. Coronavirus enters one person's body. It goes into somebody's body. And coronavirus, when it's in human body, it wants to survive in the body. When it's growing in the body, your body will start fighting it. That's why you have temperature. Do you know why you have temperature when you are sick? When you have temperature when you are sick, it's a sign that there's an activity going on in your body. So what your body is trying to do is to increase the temperature to see whether, whether that temperature will be enough to kill the pathogen that's in your body. So sometimes you wake up in the night, you wake up in the night, you are tired, you wake up in the morning, you are okay. What has happened is that your, bo your, your body system has been busy fighting some pathogens. And because they were successful, when you wake up in the morning, you just get on your way, thinking nothing of it. But what, what the pathogen is trying to do, they are trying to survive, they are trying to give back to children, they are trying to spread it out. So in terms of coronavirus, when they are produced a lot in your body, they go to your coughing mechanism. They tap into it so you can cough. So when you spread it out, when you, when you cough out, you can spread, the children can go to another person and start multiplying. And that's how coronavirus have tried a lot, uh, a lot in our time. The same thing with African swine fever. African swine fever operates differently. It's the same principle. African swine fever will affect your pig. When they affect your pig, they will make sure they will disturb the internal of your pig. But to spread, they will go to the skin of your pig and form lesion. So that when another animal touches it, or when you go and touch that animal, or when the buyer touch the animal in your farm, he has touched the lesion. If you go to another farm, he doesn't know what he's doing, but the bacteria knows that the trouser of a, of a big salesman is a good transport journey to move from one human being to another human being. The same thing happens when you have malaria. When you when mosquito when, when mosquito when my, the producer, mosquito is not what causes malaria, it's the blood. It's what's inside the blood that mosquitoes suck that cause malaria. So let's say mosquitoes suck my there's malaria, there's malaria in my body. The malaria is growing, it's making me sick. But you know that the objective most of the time, the plan of the bacteria in our body or pathogen is not to kill us. It's just to weaken us. So when we die, it doesn't pay them because Eli as the host, they're gonna die. So their goal is that before they die, they try and spread it around as much as possible. So how do you prevent it? Knowing this, that how do you prevent it as a, as a farmer on your farm? You make sure that when people come to your farm, first of all, if you can't buy all these clothes, we buy this is for this is for demonstration purpose. You will not be able to buy it for every every customer that comes to your farm. But the minimum I will expect from you is that you have a food dip. That they, they, we know what a food dip is. Food dip is a little gap you created and you put uh, disinfectant into it. Before they come to your farm, they step into it of making sure that I protect you, that I protect the farm. Not necessarily you, but protect the farm. Two, there are many, the, the areas that bacteria spread in your body is through the leg, when you walk in it, through your body. So I don't know, to make sure that you're not carrying anything in your body, I don't trust you. <laughs> so that's why I have to cover you up so that you make sure we remove all chances. The whole idea is to make sure that the farm is not exposed by, by the reason of what's been here. So on your farm, how do you apply that on your farm? I hope you guys are listening. Yeah, how do you yeah. apply that on your farm? Only people that are supposed to come to your farm should come to your farm. You are not a zoological garden. You are not where people go and look at animals. I'm telling you, I'm not going to distress this pig. That is not your goal. Your goal is to keep your animal. Only people that need to go in. Because you can't be wearing white clothes for everyone that wants to come in. So you restrict people that come to your farm. That's how you put the clothes in. The next thing you do is you put your, I said, to, your hand is another avenue through which you can spread diseases. Now, well, I won't expect big farmers to be buying gloves every day. So what I expect you to have is that you have at least a sanitizer or hand wash. People wash their hands before they go into your farm. 
But the most important thing is that make sure only people, when buyers come to your farm to come and buy pigs, you restrict them. They don't, you don't just allow them to be wandering around your farm. Ah, your farm is very big. You don't know, that's not their business. The pigs that they want to buy, you keep them in one place. Do you understand what I'm saying? Is that very clear? Good. Take it. Okay. I, I, I think you, you take up. I think it's a good time to have your breakfast now. Are they gonna eat it now or are they gonna? Now. I think it's a good time to eat your breakfast now. If you don't want to eat it now, it's all yours. Yeah. But some of the things you are gonna see, you might not be able to eat it after you. So you have you have been warned. Yeah. Yeah. Shelby, or they give wrong food to the animals, or we allow buyers to infiltrate a farm. So, you guys don't have farm now, you're very lucky, so you're not participating in this. But I can tell you, if you stay long in this business, at some point, I'm not going to lie to you, this is a profitable big farming training. If you stay long in this business, another one will meet you here. This is my second one. So, for people that are new to it, they think it's going to be the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. Actually, was only in 2006 there was a bird flu. That finished all the that finished that nearly decimate all the poultry uh, poultry farm in Nigeria. When it finishes, 2006 was when I first when, when came back to Nigeria and start poultry. Because I've learned to realize that life is a cycle. So all you need to know is to know what point of the cycle are. So I knew straight away that because the end of pandemic, a lot of farm will have removed their farm. So if you go there now, I can tell you by this time next year the price of pigs would have increased to around 700, 800 because of the law of demand and supply. It has nothing to do with the quality of your pig. It just there'll be less supply and there are a lot of people looking for it. Like this farm we are going to now, they have, uh, they, they, I told them when they, when the, um, um, ASM, I told them to sell a lot of their pigs. This was the farm we used the last time. There are a lot of, if you watch the our video last, last training, there were a lot of video, there were a lot of pigs on the farm. When it started, I told the guy, reduce your stock. And my advice to you is this, you are not going to be permanently immune from, from, from what happened. You know, coronavirus has made us to realize that nobody is protected. All the time, all the pandemic that's been happening in the world always happened in third world country. Ebola, SAR, and all this, and swine fever always happen in third world country. But coronavirus is one of the few diseases that, 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 changes, it, that changes that story. Because it's happening in, in the first world country. And this part of coronavirus, more than 200,000 have died in America as a of coronavirus. So when I came to Nigeria, people said me that uh, coronavirus is fake. I laughed because I know four people who are very close to me that have died in the UK as a result of coronavirus. They are blacks, they are middle-aged men. Actually, actually, one of them was come, planning to come back home in June. I, I met him in May, uh, March, March 20, 28th. He was trying to come to Nigeria, he made to come and start his water bottle company. Now he has come. So like I said yesterday, I, I, I'm grateful that the government of Africa were able to close their border in time. So that the, spread, the disease is not spreading. And that's why we are taking a lot of precautions as well to make sure that it remains that way. So why am I saying? I'm saying this that wherever you are as a pig farmer, at some point, if you stay long enough as a pig farmer, African Swan River is going to meet you there. But how you deal with it is that immediately there's a, a, a stroke, you hear that is around, reduce your stock straight away. Reduce any unnecessary stock. That's not the time to start expanding. 
and wait for it to fizzle out. Reduce uh, your buying of feed, where you buy your feed. Reduce every, as much as possible any outside contact to your farm. Feed, like I said, I was talking about hydrophonics. That's when you need hydrophonics more because that means you can even shut your door. Because in the coronavirus, I was told there's no movement. So how did you guys bring, how will people bring feed to their farm? They have to explain and bribe police. They gave us the farmers. They gave. Yeah, the government did that, but the police did. The police did that. No. Uh, we have this uh, this uh, certificate uh, pass. They, they give us from. So, the so once we show it to the police. Which area will you show it to the police? Eh? Nigeria, Nigeria police. Nigeria police. Nigeria police. Nigeria police. Nigeria police. No, Baba. they just they just spread it. And 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 uh, what happened to Shibu? You know, you know, you know, you know. They didn't allow me to go for to my farm for two days. Exactly. I mean, I don't get farm. I'm talking about it now because if you stay long, I'm saying it now because if you stay long in this business, because most of you are planning to stay long in this business, you have not you have escaped this one. But if you stay long in it, so what you do if it doesn't happen, if you don't hear the sound of it, you reduce your stock. Keep only the beer essentials. Keep on producing, but reduce it because the market, so that you know that will prevent you from allowing people to come to your farm. Then you can manage the amount of feed that you need to feed them, and and wait it through. Because after six months, seven months, or I wonder what happened in the cycle of life. All the people that went into big family that are not well prepared, that just went into it, that didn't go for training or that that just went for it just for the money, they will fizz you out. They will not come back to it again. They be the one that be giving testimony that big family is very bad. <laughs> But very bad. Some people are making millions out of it. So that's very important. So this one we are going to that. Let's go to the farm. Let's, let's go to the farm now. Let's